Good evening, everyone, and um, welcome to our Uniform Public Services uh, live Q&A this evening. We hope you've enjoyed all the content that you've seen so far. Um, today, I've got um, our Uniform Public Services lecturer um, with us, Marcus, um, who will introduce himself in a moment. Um, we've also got Andy, who manages the area. Um, if you've got any questions at all, please pop them in the Q&A and we'll get around to them all this evening for you. So I will hand you over now. Right. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thank you for uh, thank you for coming on the on the call. So we're just going to give you a little bit of information in regards to our public services uh, program that we offer at, at Brooksby. Uh, we offer a level two course and we also offer the level three. So if you would normally apply for these courses, if you were um, interested in applying for a range of entry level roles within the uniform, uniform protective services sector, which which could include the armed forces, police, NHS and, and fire services. Um, I'll also introduce, I'll let Marcus introduce himself uh, as well. Hi everyone. Um, so yeah, as uh, everyone's already mentioned, my name is Marcus. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I've just recently left the army. I've served eight years in the Royal Signals as part of the British Army. Um, I've been posted to numerous locations up and down the country and um, overseas. So there's been a real good bit of insight into how the armed forces works. Um, I've got some relatives working in the police force at the moment, so um, I can transfer skills from what I know and what they know into this course. And I am enthusiastic and um, hoping everyone can find some enjoyment as part of this. Fantastic, thank you. Um, right, we've not got any questions at the moment, so let's kick off with a couple of things that we get asked quite frequently um, as um, a course inquiry. So um, a lot of people ask, um, so like, what kind of kit do they need and what do they need to buy before joining? Um, is there anything that you would expect them to definitely have? Um, or is there anything that we would provide for them? So we've got a, um, we've got, I've just put together a, um, a, a new list of, of equipment that students will need. So we um, because there, there is a practical because there is a practical element of the, um, you know, of the course as well. We do have um, a kit list which consists of a Apollo, um, a uh, I think it's a half zip uh, jacket, shorts and socks for you to do your practical in but also we have an optional equipment list as well which would include like a, a hoodie uh, a rain jacket and um, and others as well so that is looking at coming to about 50 pounds per person give or take um, but there's also sorry as i forgot there's also some sort of cargo uh, type activity pant that we include with that as well so um what we would do with that is we, at enrollment, we would have um, Jeff, who, who uh, is our kit supplier. He will be there with with uh, equipment for you to try on and then you can order that via the website after the enrollment. Fantastic, thank you. Um, questions come in. Uh, what sort of proportion of the courses um, would you say would be practical versus in the classroom? But this question in the last one that I was in. Um, so the the it, it would be it would be a mixture. I mean, with when um, with public services being based at the Brooksby campus, you you'll see that one of the reasons for that is because of our uh, facilities that we've got in terms of our the, the space that we have, um, or how many acres now, Meg? Have we have we got eight hundred and twelve or something like that? Eight hundred and fifty, I think. Eight hundred and fifty acres as of land. So, for instance, for for the um, land navigation units that you might do in in public services. It's a it's a great space for you to be able to do that. Uh, but also other courses, other units that we would um, deliver in the program, such as uh, the preparation for for fitness testing uh, when you when you join the armed forces or or any of the forces. Uh, we have our state of the art strength and conditioning gym. Uh, we have the the sports centre as well. So we do try and get use of the practical facilities as much as we possibly can without negating the the need for for theory so it's about a 50 50 split give or take as well great thank you um could we possibly talk a little bit about um the different sectors within the public services that students could go and work in and different career options yeah of course so um the our, our previous learners 
for example, that the, the they they're looking at getting into the police. The majority of the learners want are wanting to go into the armed services, which is um, you know our our lecturers, our experience as Marcus introduced himself as as um, has just left the the Royal Signals, Marcus. Royal yeah, Signals. that's correct. Yeah, yeah, just trying to double check. Uh, and we also have another member of staff as well, a guy called Steve Nolan, that um, that is an ex Royal Marine. So. Um, very, very experienced lecturers, so uh, which is great for the majority of our learners because they want to go on to the armed forces. But also, um, we we have students that want to go into the Royal Navy, uh, fire and rescue services, and also uh, we've had a few students that want to go on to do um, paramedical science at, at university and then go into the paramedics after they've studied uh, a public services course with us. Thank you. Sorry, I muted myself there. Oh. Um, thank you for that. That's fantastic. Um, so um, people often ask, um, do they have to do the level two before they do the level three or can they go straight into level three um, after school? And like, what are the entry requirements? Yeah, so entry requirements onto the um, so just a little bit about the, the study programme. So they're the both with with Pearson as in the awarding body, they are BTECs. Um, the level two is a diploma in public services, which is a one year course, but also the um, the level three is a national is a national diploma in public services uh, or at the, for next year uniform protected services. And, and that can either be a one or two year course. So you would register onto the diploma at level three um, and then in the second year you would top up to the extended diploma. Um, entry requirements for level two are four GCSE level three grades. Uh, we do ask for a, a sufficient level of fitness and a, and a commitment for entry into one of the armed um, uh, uniform public services as well. Um, and the level three are four GCSE level four grades. And again, with a sufficient level of fitness and commitment, because ultimately the course is designed for, for those learners that want to go on into the uniform public or protective services. So we do ask for that as a, as a stipulation as well. Um, a little bit about assessment. So uh, the the assessment is continual. It is all coursework based, um, and you are you are marked at pass at pass merit and distinction. Um, yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Um, just building on that, I know that some people um, will probably ask me this in the future, so it'd be good to know. Um, do you, will you plan on doing any sort of fitness tests? Um, as a prerequisite to get into the course or um, would you tend to just take students word for it and then build up their fitness while they're on the course as well? We, we, no we, we don't it's not a as you know as we wouldn't turn anybody down we, you know with uh, limited we just advise a, a sufficient level of fitness because you would be taking part in units for example such as improving health and fitness and physical preparation and fitness testing as, as part of the course. So we do expect you to engage in those fitness tests. And ultimately, if if this course is helping you to prepare for, um, you know, a career in the armed services, for example, or the, or the Royal Navy, then you would need to embark on those fitness testes, tests before you go into the um, into those services. So we preparation for that, really. <coughs> muted Meg. <laughs> so what's wrong with me today? I never usually mute myself. Um, so someone's asked uh, would this course help them to become like a paramedic or um, something similar? Would that be a possible career option or would you suggest something else? Yeah, yeah I mean people have people have come onto the course. We have had students that have come onto the course that, that want to go into the paramedics. So they've done a, either a level two um, and going on to the level three in in uniform public services, and that has prepared them to um, then look at further, sorry, at higher education into into paramedical science. So usually, they um, people that want to go into the paramedics would have to go to university to get that qualification as well. So this would definitely be a a, a basis for them or a foundation for them to then build onto that at HE and then a career in in paramedics. 
Great, thank you. Um, something else we often get asked is, um, what if students don't pass their GCSE grades at the correct grade? Um, can they continue those courses alongside the course? Um, and also, particularly this year, I suppose a lot of exams are getting cancelled, aren't they? So yeah. um, we often get people being quite worried about that. Um, so if they for any reason didn't get their maths and English grades, could they do that alongside the course? Yeah, so maths and English is built into the into the timetable. So, I mean, ideally, uh, it would be great for you to pass your, your maths and English because they will go towards your four entry requirements if, if you want to do level three. And um, but the, the I would recommend that you strive to get your English and maths uh, because it, it would give you more time to be able to focus on your um, vocational qualification. Um, however, it, it's not a, a deal breaker if you don't get your English and maths, you, you'd still be able to access the course, but you would um, that would be built into your timetable. The only thing I would say is when you, when your mates are, are not in English and maths, you will be. So it's a bit of a carrot for you to uh, to get that those qualifications. Yeah, definitely an incentive to work hard now. <laughs> Um, so someone has asked, do you have any like sports extracurricular kind of stuff that students can do on the side? Obviously, yeah, so the pandemic. Yeah, um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, the um, <coughs> pandemic has, excuse me, has put a bit of a hold on um, on uh, on sport and activity at the moment. But um, yeah, with with the again the provision just just to make clear that the public services provision will be at the Brooksby campus next year and as I've said previously the, um, the facilities that we've got are, are, are you know are, are excellent facilities so we do have enrichment uh, where you can you can be involved in uh, the football team you can be involved in Leicester Tigers rugby if you want to you can be involved in Leicester City women's uh, as well as a netball academy that, that we offer at the college and and the the sport is all built into your timetable uh, so for example between 12 and 2 on a Monday you'd have the opportunity uh, to to take part in a training session for whatever sport that you wanted to do and then all the fixtures would take place on a on a Wednesday afternoon which is college wide so everybody would have access to to those fixtures so if you're doing UPS and you're a football you like to play football you, you could be involved in the in the football team for the college as well um, if there isn't any sort of sports that, that you are interested in any team sports we do have a, a strength and conditioning gym which you'd be able to access on a on a Wednesday afternoon we have a two hour slot on a Wednesday afternoon where you can go up and um, and train under the guidance of, of some of our lecturers that have got master's degrees in strength and conditioning Fantastic. I suppose that crossover is really, really helpful with the, uh, the sports side of things. Definitely. Um, so someone has asked, uh, do you get any students on the course who are older, so uh, maybe non school leavers? Um, would the course be suitable for them as well? Maybe if they wanted like a career change or something like that? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. There would be um, there would be, a, you know, any student is welcome. The only sort of thing that we that you'd have to consider is the funding requirement. Um, if it's your first level three program, I believe it, it will be funded. Um, but that, yeah, there is sort of funding stipulations that you would have to consider because, for example, students 16 to 18, they're, they're, the course is fully funded. But once you hit a certain a certain age, I think it's um, 19 to 24. If it's your first level three, it's it's funded. But anything over that, you, you would have to look at getting um, funding for that course. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's something called an advanced learn alone that you can get um, if you are 19 plus and you have already got a level three or if you're over 24. Um, and that literally works the same as a student loan. So um, you only pay it back once you are you've finished the course and you're earning a certain amount. Yeah. Um, so that's quite nice. Um, it doesn't affect you in, in the way that a normal loan is like a student loan. Um, oops, sorry. <laughs> my computer making loud noises um lovely so um i think we've covered a lot of our frequently asked questions um maybe if we could just cover um like do we get a lot of students from all over the county and um, do people tend to travel um because i know a lot of people want to do our courses but um if they live a bit further away they can um it can often put them off maybe sometimes um we'll talk about how many what proportion of students you would say do come in to travel sure 
Yeah, I, I mean, we, we are due to the sort of location that, that we're based, we are quite lucky that we have a, um, a fleet of minibuses that are able to, to go out onto the um, Leicestershire and you know, up to Nottinghamshire as well into those areas to pick students up. We, we have a set of fleet of minibuses that follow um, bus routes. So if there is anybody sort of further a field that would require transport to the college then uh, there is a transport section on our website where you can find out further information for that um, also if, if you're from even further afield from a national uh, point of view we do have accommodation available at the college uh, there's a number of accommodation blocks um, and again all that information is found on the website and um, i would advise you if, if that is something that you want um, if or if you need accommodation due to wanting to come on the course then you you book that relatively soon because it can get booked up quite quickly lovely thank you um i'll put the link to the accommodation in the chat as well um if that's something that you're interested in um just quickly can students if they do the level three could they go on to university course um afterwards and do you have an idea of the different kinds of university courses they could maybe go on to? Yeah, um, like I said previously, we we have students that go on to do uh, paramedical science. Paramedical science. We do have a, a, a recent uh, student has gone on to do things like outdoor adventure um, degrees at the University of Worcester. Um, but also there's, there is it because there is a sport crossover as well. We, we have our students that are able to go on to um, sports qualifications at, at university as well. But the, there is that option there and, and there's the option of, of our own HE sport courses as well, um, which again can, can be found on the website. And um, the, the majority of learners do go into their, their uh, chosen career path. Uh, straight on the back of a level three, but but there are students that go on to higher education for it as well, and, and it is set up for that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you will get UCAS points from them. Um, just quickly, we've not got too long left, um, but could we talk about um, how many weeks students, uh, how many days students are in college per week? Um, I know we don't really have the timetable set just now, um, but what students tend to do outside of that time as well um, do they tend to get some work experience is is it are they able to get work experience around like their college hours yeah work experience is something that we do encourage so uh, an example of a level three program is is three days a week um so you'd be you could be in college monday thursday friday for example and then on a tuesday we would allocate that as a work experience day for you where we would actively encourage you to, to find a suitable work experience where placement, wherever that may be. Again, obviously, within the current pandemic, it's, it's put a bit of a, put the brakes on a little bit for, for students uh, wanting to gain work experience. But there are students that are still able to access work experience if the uh, employer or the provider allow. Um, if, if you have trouble finding a, a work placement, we do have members of, of staff at college that can help with that as well and, and um, yeah, more than supportive to help you find that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's some specific members of staff in our student services team, aren't there, that tend to help with that kind of stuff. Um, and they'll like risk assess your chosen place, um, which is quite helpful for you as well. Um, OK, let's see if we've got any more questions. Um, so um, could we go into a little bit more detail about what content the courses cover, so um, modules um, that they might cover within the courses? Yeah, um, Marcus, do you want to come in with some of the modules that you're currently teaching at the moment? Yeah, so at the moment I'm delivering the um, land navigation module, um, the level two, which involves at the minute because obviously restrictions uh, delivery and feedback from myself on so my level two who's uh, a rough terrain and um, hopefully once the restrictions lift and we're back in the classroom we'll be out on the area and obviously put what we've learned into practice and um, that goes for the physical preparation module which um, again um, we want to learn about the um, fitness requirements to join the relevant public service that the individuals who come and join our course are aspiring to move on to. Um, I'm also delivering uh, health and fitness, um, public service skills 
um, command and control, how to manage specific incidents, depending on what role you are with, what organization, again, you aspire to join. Um, and there's a few more that off the top of my head, not really uh, right now. Great, thank you. Uh, hopefully that's given a good uh, idea of what you can expect um, when starting uh, the course. Um, so let's see what else we can. Um, so something that people often ask is, um, is there, are there exams? Because obviously um, a lot of students are used to being at school um, and having to do end of year exams. Um, is that quite similar in college or is it something where they're assessed throughout or do they do some coursework, some exams? On the courses, on the courses we offer, it, it's uh, it's all coursework based. So the, um, for example, the the sort of average number of assignments that you'd have per unit is is three. Uh, there may be a little bit more, but for example, Marcus might teach you for for six weeks, and on on week one he he would distribute the assignment, and you would get six weeks to complete it, which would give Marcus enough time to cover all the content. You would then hand the assignment in on week six. Um, the lecturer would mark it, uh, and you get your, your feedback uh, and grade back within four weeks. And it works on a, a pass merit and distinction. So um, you basically get two chances to do an assignment. So if you if you do an assignment and you only get a pass, for example, and you've covered all the and you attempt all of the criteria, then you basically get a second chance to to get the grade that that you feel that you should that you should get based upon capability um, using the feedback that the lecturer provides you. Great, thank you. Um, we haven't got much time left, but um, I'll just ask one last question that we got asked quite a lot last year um, during the lockdown, which was, um, is there anything students can do sort of between now and September to prepare themselves for the course? Um, so whether that be fitness related, um, reading and um, stuff like that, work, well, obviously not work experience necessarily at the moment, um, but is there anything you'd recommend or would you just tell them to enjoy their summer and turn up um, <laughs> in September? Um, no, I mean the the, the Pearson website. You, you can go onto the Pearson website, and that might that would give you an idea of. Um, I mean, what what I would recommend to 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 students across sort of my areas is again the, the look on the college website, find out what units that you will be studying within that particular course, and then head on to the Pearson website for for the course that you that you are studying, and that will give you more content. Um, in regards to what you are going to be studying. So I would I would definitely recommend that. And then by doing that, that would sort of highlight to you any sort of further reading that you might want to do before before the course starts. Um, but yeah, obviously work experience is, is a little bit limited at the moment. But again, if you can just make sure that you come in with a sufficient level of fitness, knowing that you'll be taking part in those uh, those activities, then that would also be recommended. Perfect, thank you. I think that's all we've got time for today. So thank you so much to Marcus and Andy for joining us tonight and thank you for everyone um, who has uh, joined us on the Q&A. Um, we hope you um, enjoy the rest of the resources we've got for you today. But if you do have any further questions, um, there's an email at the bottom of every page on the virtual open day um, and you can get in touch with our course inquiries team. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody. Yes, thank you.